Okay, open your Bibles, if you would, to Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Say, Pastor, you've been there a time or two here lately. We're going again. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Colossians 3, verses 1 through 4. <clears throat> you know, uh, it, it's a common practice in our country... It's not mandatory, and depending on circumstances and all that other stuff. But when a fella is going to ask a gal to be his wife, they usually buy a ring, you know, you know, if they can afford it. And it's usually, almost in America especially, it's almost always a diamond, but it doesn't have to be. There's no law. There's just, in, in 1 Leroy, chapter 3, it doesn't say it has to be a diamond, okay? Uh, there's no 1 Leroy in the Bible, by the way. But, but it's common. It's, 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 it's not an uncommon thing in America to, uh, you know, if uh, a, a, a guy's, you know, courting, sparking a gal with gal, and kind of think, boy, you know, I, I, I want to spend, I want to I wanna make a home with her. I want to have youngins with her. I want to spend my life with her. Uh, it's not unusual, not exclusive. And don't feel bad if you didn't go that route, but uh, it, I got to say this to, to buy an engagement ring. Okay. A diamond usually is what it is. And if you look at a diamond, I don't have one on, but I'm just kind of making believe. If you look at that diamond, you'll see that it has facets. And by that, I mean the, the diamond has been cut, and it has flat places where it's been cut and, and shaped by the jeweler to, to uh, you know, as close perfection as can be done. And, and it has, and every one of those little flat places is a facet, okay? Everybody with me? You know, F-A-C-E-T, a facet. I don't know, maybe in France they say fausse, I don't know. But uh, it's a facet. And so uh, it's, uh, and that way, you know, you can turn it and, and it reflects the light. You know, you can just see it sparkle and do all kinds of things. Of course, any jewel will do that, you know, regardless what it is, if it's an emerald or a... Uh, whatever, you know, that's, that's cut, uh, you know, tanzanite or, you know, it, it, it'll reflect the light and you can see the facets. Well, that's all I got. No. <laughs> uh, tonight, Lord being my helper from this scripture, I want to, I want to speak to you and encourage you about four facets that I see in these four verses about being heavenly minded. Say heavenly minded. We, we must be heavenly minded. Now, unless you live under a rock or, an, or, or don't have electricity in your home, you know America's in trouble. America's in trouble. America is in trouble. And we have long departed from the God of our founding fathers. It's been a gradual drift. Believe it or not, it started even before the Civil War. One little seed was sown, 1859. And then other things were picked up 10, 15, 20 years later and on and on until in the 1920s, a, a, a reprobate took over, was looked upon as the ideal for education, and he established just about every worldview and every method that's in our public education today. And through that systematic, systematic, oh, 
removing God, removing the Bible, removing prayer, removing, removing. I mean, now you think about how, how the media talks about Tim Tebow. How can they get away with it? Because he's an evangelical Christian. If he was a Jew or if he was a Muslim, they wouldn't dare talk about him the way they do. Well, why are evangelical Christians in the crosshair? Because that's what our founding fathers were. They believed in a personal, by faith relationship with Jesus Christ. Regardless of their brand or their, their denominational banner that, 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 that flew over their, the church that they were a part of, the congregation they were, that didn't mean anything. They all held these things in common. And so we're, America's in really big trouble. What are we going to do about it? And I know I, I, people say, well, I'm going to vote. Well, we ought to vote. But I'm telling you, it's going to take more than voting right. I'm telling you, it's going to take more than voting right. It's going to take more than, 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 than you know, our answer is more than a human answer. It's heaven's answer. Yeah, you need to vote. You need to vote correctly. You need to vote Christian. You need to vote absolutely biblical principles. You know, you, you turn on the TV, and who are they making out like a monster? You probably know that's the one you probably need to vote for. Because they make Tim Tebow out like he's a, an idiot. Do you understand how it works? So, in these four verses, I got just four little simple points that I want to share with you. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 says, If then you were raised with Christ, since you were raised with Christ, this is assuming you're born again, you have a faith relationship with Christ. He's your Lord. He's your Savior. He, he is, he is he's the one. He's the only begotten Son of God. Since you're raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on uh, uh, for you. Uh, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died. When did you die? When you were born again. And that's what water baptism pictures. For you died, and your life is hidden. With Christ in God. And when Christ who is our life appears. Then you also will appear with him in glory. Four little things I want to share with you tonight. About being heavenly minded. Four, four little cuts on the precious stone. Four facets. Number one is this. That we see in verse one. A searching mind. If you be raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. You need to search. You need to seek. You need to press in and follow. Lord, what? You, you remember when that, all the rave, uh, what would Jesus do? Remember the bracelets and things and people got tattoos and wore necklaces and all that? Well, you know, th that became so such a, you know... It was so cool, then it became uncool. I don't know who decides what's cool and what's uncool, but you understand what I'm saying. But what would Jesus do? How would Jesus conduct himself? Seek his mind and his will on the matter. Because you and I are prone to go back to our flesh. You and I are prone to... to to, to, to think it out, to, 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 you know, I mean, God wants us to be more than, in, than Inspector Gadget. Remember that cartoon? He wants us to be more than that. He, he wants us to seek his, Lord, what would you do? What would you have me do? 
And that really applies to every decision of life. America didn't get, get in the hole. In, no, America's in a pit. America didn't get a pit in this pit overnight. We were headed that way long, 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 long before any of us was born. But it really has accelerated tremendously so since the 60s. But a lot of things happened before then. But I'm telling you, our answer is up yonder. It's not in Washington. It's not in Richmond. It's not in Winchester. Our answer is in the throne room of God. That's, what, that's where it is. You need to have a searching mind. Can I tell you something? I don't know all there is to know. Now, I've been accused of that. Usually, it's in a joking manner. Well, I don't know. I asked Pastor Bob. And they said, can I ask you something? I said, yeah, but if I don't know the answer, I'll ask my wife. Because I don't know everything. And she don't either, really. But she's not in here, so I can say that. But I'm telling you, we have someone who does. And he's our Lord and our Savior. Have a seeking mind. Lord, what would you have me do? How would you have me be? Lord, what, how, lead me in this situation. Lord, I don't know what to do. And, and listen, when you don't know what to do, you don't do anything. You wait on God. When you don't know what to do, you wait on God. But you've got to have a, have a searching mind. Seek those things which are above. Lord, what would you have me do in this situation? What would you have me do? Now, you say, well, Pastor, I, I understand, but there's nothing serious going on in my life. Listen, something serious going on in your life every day if you're alive. You're here to be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. I mean, why does 70% of the people in America don't go to church because they've never been asked the first time? Now, who failed? God didn't fail. Nowhere in the Bible is to say lost people, unchurched people come to church. But I can tell you, I can show you time and time and time and time again where it says God's people are to go after them. Have a seeking mind. Lord, you know, things, things go on in people's lives. And, you know, so um, I don't know. I don't know exactly what. I don't even know the why. But I'm telling you, if you'll press into the Lord, he will direct you and guide you. But you've got to know where to look. And that place to look is above Set your mind on things above, on the high, high things of God, not on these low base things. You say, well, I've got to live. I've got to work. Yes, do your job as unto the Lord. However, God has, whatever avenue God has given you to generate income, you do that as unto the Lord. But you set your mind on things above. Amen. You know, uh, I don't watch a lot of television. I just don't, you know. I hear people talking about these blood sucker things and, and, and all this crazy, you know, just all this demonic stuff. And I think, I wish you knew your Bible like you did blood sucker number three. Do, do you understand? I'm not trying to make you feel bad if you're watching blood sucker. Or whatever that thing is, you know, with the with the vampires and the and the people and and then I don't even know what the name of it is. Don't want to know. I'm just saying, set your mind on things above. What, you know why people get depressed and anxious and overwhelmed is because they're feeding on the junk of the world and instead of the high things of God. Well, moving right along. Look at verse two. He says, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. You need to have a set mind. James tells us that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. 
He's like a ship on the, on the sea that's tossed to and fro. Like he has, he doesn't have a rudder. He can't steer. Just whichever way the wind blows, whichever way the wind blows, that's the way he goes. Can I say something to you from the bottom of my heart? Get a spiritual backbone. And stand with the Lord. Now, everybody's not going to like you. But you're not here to get everybody to like you. There's people going to try to usurp you and undermine you. And they'll smile at you and stab you all in the, just before you know it. But you know what? You're not here to please me and I'm not here to please you. We're all here to please him. Set your mind that you are going to follow Jesus. You know, there's just some things that I, God be in my head, I'm not going to do. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give up the word of God. That's my authority is the word of God. I'm not going to not deny the, the person and presence of the Holy Spirit. He is my anointing. He's my empowerment. I'm not going to deny my loving father. And I'm not going to deny my risen Savior. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And I just, you know, I, I marry men to women. That's, that's it. Not going any farther. You know, I'm not going any farther. Now, there's great, listen, you don't realize the great intense pressure that's being put on right now to make that change. It's, it's demonic, and it's, it's, it's over, but it's not overwhelming because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And I've got a set mind. The lost need to be saved. Lost people can't go to heaven. I don't care how they're related to you, how much you love them, how nice they were to you, all the good qualities that they may have. But you've got to come to Jesus. The only way to, through the Father, to the Father is through His Son, Jesus Christ. That is set. Set your th mind on things above. You see, if we'd become more heavenly minded, it wouldn't be such a struggle come election day. You know? It wouldn't, it would, if we would set our minds on heavenly things, it wouldn't be such a struggle between husbands and wives and, and parents and children. We need to set our mind on things above and not on the things of the earth. I mean, I thank God for my house and my car and my wife and my kids and my grandkids. And I thank the Lord for all the blessings of life. But you know what? I don't live for that house. I don't live for my payday. I, I live for Jesus. Can you see anybody give me an amen on that? That's, listen, one of the facets in the ring of God is set your mind on things above. Seek him and set your mind right there. Amen? That, that's, that, that's what we have to do, dear friends. The third thing I want us to see in verse 3, a facet, the third facet of being heavenly minded. The Bible says, For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You need to start practicing being spiritual. We've got the carnal thing down pat. Amen? Amen? Now, I'll tell you how easy it is to do the wrong thing. Just get in a car and drive over to exit 310 about 7.30 in the morning or 4 o'clock in the evening. I don't, you know what? I have learned not to do that. It's a rare thing. The other day I was coming from the hospital and I looked and I said, oh, I should have got off Route 11 right here and went down and crossed over and come back up, Ailer. I know what's going to happen. But if I went down to 307, they, they back up too. 
And then if I went all the way to Middletown, by that time I'd have been home, but I stuck right here. You understand? <laughs> Set your mind to be a spiritual mind. To be a spiritual mind. To be a spiritual mind. Amen? A spiritual mind. What are you more interested in? Getting your way or letting God have his way? That, that's spiritual. Lord, not my... What did Jesus pray in the garden? Father, not my will, but yours be done. That, that was the spiritual side. Lord, I'm resolved to your way. Amen? The third facet in the ring of God, searching mind, a set mind, and a spiritual mind. For you died. Can I remind you that we need to, you know, try to remember to do that every morning when you get out of the bed. You know, as you're stumbling into the, to the, to the bathroom or what, getting in the shower or whatever it is, you're going downstairs and finding that first cup of coffee, whatever it is you're doing, as you're heading out, when you feet off the, you know, out of the bed and on the floor and you stand up, Lord, help us to remember, Lord, I'm dead, I'm hidden you. Lord, right now, I crucify, my, my flesh has been crucified and it is dead. I reckon it dead and buried. And I've been resurrected in the newness of life. Help me to re remind me, help me to remember that this day when I get behind the steering wheel. Help me when I get to my place where I do my job. Help me when that coworker who is really getting under my last nerve, help me, Lord, to see them as you see them and see their need. If they don't, need, if they don't know Jesus, they, that's what they need. Amen? Amen. Amen? A spiritual mind. We aren't as spiritually minded as we need to be because all we have to do is look around at our nation and see it. We're just not. You know, we can't blame the liberals and the secular humanists and the atheists and, 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 you know, the liberals and whoever else is out there in la-la land. You know, it's not their fault. It's our fault. The church, we need to, we need to get after people. Love them enough to tell them about Jesus. Love them enough to invite them to the house of God. Love them enough. Because when 70% of the people in America that don't go to church have never been asked, that's shame on me. That's shame on you. It's not shame on them. They're just acting naturally. You know, Ringo Starr. They're just acting naturally. That's all they're doing. That's all they're doing. You can't expect them to act any other way. Lost people are lost. They're not concerned. They're not looking. They're not thirsty. They're not hungry. They're not. They're just who they are. Their God is usually themselves. Or if it's not themselves, it's their job or their, acute, their money or their, their house or their kids or something. But it's not God. Oh, God, help us to be more spiritual minded. And to see, Lord, help me, give me your eyes and help me to see as you see. Had a preacher friend talking to me on the phone today, Brother Greg, day, uh, Greg, uh, Greg Collins over at, uh, in Mason County, West Virginia, over on the High River. And he, he was all excited. He said, oh, brother, he says, I saw a young woman coming to the altar, weeping and wailing and bellering and carrying on. I hadn't seen that in years. I said, I hadn't either. I said, what'd you preach on? He said, I preached on hell. Boy, you don't hear that preached on anymore, do you? I mean, not really, do you? I mean, oh, my goodness, might offend somebody. Uh, somebody might get upset. Or somebody might leave. <sighs> Listen, if you're not here for Jesus, there's the door. 
Let's, I'm here for Jesus. I'm here for Jesus. If I'm not here from Jesus, I need to leave. Amen? Who are we here for? That's who, that's, he's the one who died on the cross, was buried and rose again. He's the Savior of the world, and he's the king coming again. Amen? Oh, Lord, I'm here for Jesus. You know, sometimes I, I, I think of Gideon. You know, they started out with thousands, tens of thousands, and God pared it down to 300 so they could do something. Well, I tell you, I'm ready to do something. How about you? And if you're not ready to do something, watch out. God might pair you off. <laughs> Let's do something for Jesus. Amen? Let's have, be spiritual-minded. And then the last thing. Oh, you know what that means, don't you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I can just keep on going. In, in verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you, that repentant, believing follower of Jesus, also will appear with him in glory. Can I submit one other thing to you that's, that's terribly lacking in the, in the church uh, today? And I'm talking about the church in general. The church. Too many Christians do not have a secure mind. They're not secure. They're just full of what ifs and old mys and oh my goodness and all I don't know. And they look for roadblocks instead of bridges. They they look at they look at the ugliness of the devil instead of the greatness of God. And I'm telling you, you need to turn that around. Yeah, hell's hot, hell's real, and bless God, I'm not going. A secure mind. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Now, I, I kind of like that is a very positive, affirming, confident statement. Amen? I'm in Jesus. I'm in him. I can serve God. I can talk to people. I can invite people. I can be a witness. You know, uh, I, can, I can make a difference in my immediate family. Now, I know immediate family, they're the, sometimes they can be hard. Er. Because they knew you when you were a knothead. I knew you when you were just a little rebellious, less than perfect, whatever you were. But I'm telling you, you don't have to say many words when, you, when they can see love and contentment and peace and consistency. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to always get it right. But when you get it wrong, you don't stay wrong long. You get it right. Amen? Amen? Dear friends, America's in trouble. America's in trouble. The family is in trouble. It's in trouble. The school system is in trouble. It's in trouble. The government, they are in big trouble. Anybody here write an $18 trillion check and bail us out? I mean, my goodness, when you break it down to the 320 million legal taxpaying people, I mean, that, I mean, you know, that's, that's less than $100,000. <laughs> Uh, I can't even write that check, can you? Oh, Lord, help us. Help us to be the facet that God saved us to be. Help us to be that, that searching mind. Listen, searching minds are good minds. I want to know the truth, Lord. I want some. I just, I, I don't understand this, Lord. Show me. S help me to see 
Show me from your word. Speak to me from your spirit, and his spirit will confirm the word. His spirit will never contradict the word. Lord, just show me. Show me. Lord, bring somebody in my life that, that, that I can trust. Help me to have truth. Amen. Seek. Don't be afraid to ask God questions. They don't offend him, and he doesn't think you're rebelling. Ask him. He will tell you. He will show you a searching mind, a set mind. I'm in Christ. I'm saved. I'm saved on the basis of who he is and what he's done. And I'm in him and I'm set. And the Bible is the word of God. Salvation's through Christ alone. There's only, uh, there's not a thousand ways to heaven. There's only one. Heaven's real. Hell's real. The Bible's the word of God. I mean, I'm set. I want to get lost people saved. I don't care what the color of their skin or their eyes or the hair. I don't care anything about that. I just want to see lost people come to Jesus. That's what I want. I'm set. I'm set. I need to love my wife as Christ loved the church. She needs to respect me as the church is to respect our Savior. I mean, it just works out. I tell you, when she respects me, it's easy for me to love her. And when I love her, it's easier for her to respect me. See how it works? It's a win, 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 win. Ooh, baby, win situation. Uh-huh. Yes, a searching mind, a set mind, a spiritual mind. I'm hidden with Christ in God. My life is. You know, I can't believe I'm 60 years old so quickly. I must have set a record. Because it doesn't didn't feel like it took 60 years to get here. I mean, really. I mean... I mean, my sister and two of my brothers called me and my son and my daughter. My grandkids called and sang Grandpa a song. And, and you know, and, and, and Lukey told me happy birthday a half a dozen times. And so did my sweetie babe, you know. And I just can't believe I got here this quick. And I do want to thank you for all. Of, my goodness, 200 and some thank happy birthday so far on Facebook. And, and just, you know, and emails and all this other stuff. And I just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I'm here this quickly. Now, I'm glad, in a way, I'm glad I turned 60 because both my grandfathers died when they were 59. <laughs> that was lingering back there. <laughs> one with a heart attack and one with cancer. And, mm. So I'm glad I'm. Went, went longer than grandpa's, my, both my grandfathers. I'm kind of glad. Now, I want to get to 70 because my dad passed away when he was 69. But my mother, she'll be 97 in December. I don't know. If, I don't know if I got some of that in me or not. But I'm, I'm, I'm just like her. I'm going to live to 100 or die trying. You know how long I want to live? I want to live as long as I can talk about Jesus. Because that, that, that's who I'm supposed to be. I want to live just as long as I can, I, I can talk about Jesus and tell people of his wondrous love. And how he reached down his hand for a, a lost old little old boy like me and scooped me up and brought, him to my, brought me to himself, showed me I was a sinner and showed me the, his way of salvation, his plan. I've never gotten over it. You know what, the, you know what Christians need to ask the Lord to do? Because this is what I've been asking the Lord to do. It is so easy to get wrapped up in whatever your routine of life is. You know, we all get those things. You know, I mean, people wash, you know, you wash your clothes on the same day. 
you mow your yard usually on the same day of the week. You, you, you service your car on the same. I mean, you know, we just, we're, we're creatures of habit and, and we do these things and, you know, we get up at a certain time and, you know, it just everything, we just get so programmed to be autopilot. And we just kind of, we get to where we do it, where we don't have to think, we just do it. Now, what happens from that is we can detach ourselves emotionally, spiritually. We detach ourselves from that which is around us. And when we do that, here's where we look. We look here. We look here. I want to think I feel. Well, if I was her, well, if I was him, well, I'd never. Well, I'm up. Well, I tell you, I think. Well, now, this is, and, and we start putting out, we start making ourselves little gods. That's what we do. And, and so we get so detached, and it's much easier to be upset or angry than it is to shed tears over lost people getting saved. When's the last time you shed a tear in the house of God because you're happy? Or because you were, God just spoke to you and blessed you in such a way that you just, you see how the devil hardens us? Did I share with you what Dustin said to me the, when he was in, whenever I told the church about 86 people getting saved in Pakistan and he couldn't believe People weren't going crazy nuts, praising God and clapping and jumping up and down. They, we just sat there like we do. He was really dumbfounded. Of course, he's down there in a system, in a, in a place where, buddy, the, the spiritual temperature is 187 degrees. And maybe our 73 degrees is too cool. Do you understand? Spiritually. Not, not really, but Spiritually. Is everyone with me? Lord, break my heart. Lord, if you need to take my sleep, that I spend more time in prayer for lost people. For, Lord, for whatever it takes, Lord, I, wanna, I, I need to pray for more, more the families more and more. We need to pray for each other more and more. We need to pray for the unchurched. Seventy percent of them never been asked. Oh, God. Send somebody. And, Lord, I'm available. You bring somebody, bring somebody across my path. Lord, I w help me to seize the opportunity that you give me every day. But I am so detached and insulated. And I'm inward instead of focused outward. And it hardens my heart. And it's easier to get angrier than it is to get happy. And that's where the devil wants to keep us. To where we're not usable. Very usable at all. Because the Lord wants us to be the facet on his ring. Amen. Lord, help us to be more heavenly minded.